Hello and welcome to this new Hostify video. My name is Alex and today we're going to be connecting an MX AC CPE, like this Powerbeam AC here, up to a normal MX a AC AP. I'm going to go through the process of logging into the Powerbeam AC. That process can be used across the Nanostation AC, Nanobeam AC and all the other devices that Ubiquiti makes. We're going to connect the Powerbeam AC up to a normal MX AC AP and also what, what settings uh, you need to configure in order to get everything working. We're going to do this as if we're doing it for a WISP. So we're going to put the Powerbeam in bridge mode. We're going to put the Powerbeam in, a, in router mode as well and what each mode does and how you can get VLANs passed through as well. Uh, and run through the, the setup basically of how to get this connected up for a customer if it was a WISP CPE. So this is the setup we have. We have a Nanostation AP as our access point and we have a Powerbeam AC, the one we saw in the, in the video last, uh, as our CPE device. So I've got everything set up in the office here um, and then what I've got is my computer plugged into the PoE injector for the power beam. So I've got the, the computer plugged into the LAN port and then the PoE port going out to the radio. So the, the radio link has the IP address of 172.18.38.5 for the AP and 172.18.38.6 for the CPE as well. We've also got the SSID of Hostify test and the password of Hostify password. Uh, we're going to put those in the, in the radio devices and get them connected together. So I've got a few things set up here. I've got the Powerbeam AC Gen 2 feed. I've got a PoE injector. I've got two Ethernet cables and I've got the power cable. So how you want to get this wired up for the first time setup of the Powerbeam is to get the power plugged into the PoE injector. And then on the PoE, there's two ports. There's PoE with a lightning bolt symbol. And there's LAN with a little network symbol. So the PoE cable so the PoE port needs to go from that port there into the radio device. And then the LAN port cable needs to go directly into your laptop. So we'll do that now. I've got everything plugged in as it should be. The power beam's turned on. All I've got to do now is set a static IP on my desktop and we should be able to log into the GUI. So first we're going to do the Mac OS uh, setup for the static IP and we're going to jump into a Windows machine and set up that as well because I know a lot of people use Windows still for networking. So on Mac OS you go to System Preferences, then Network, then Ethernet. And Ethernet will be set to DHCP by default, so you'll just see this, you'll see Wi-Fi and then Ethernet. If you set Configure IPv4 to manually, and then the IP address you need to set should be within the subnet of 192.168.1. So the, the default IP address for the power beam is 192.168.1.20. So I can set it to anything else other than that. Uh, so if I go 192.168.1.5, and then subnet mask would just be the standard slash 24, which is 255.255.255.0, and then press apply. If I open up a new tab, I should be able to get to 192.168.1.20. After a few seconds, it loads, and go visit this website. And it will say, set up the country and set up the language. So I'm just going to demo the Windows setup before we go any further. So on Windows, you go to the Start menu, and then to Settings. And then you need to go to Network and Internet, and you've got Ethernet settings here. So on Ethernet, you set the network to IP assignment, you've got automatic DHCP. If you set this to manual, and you can see IPv4, and you can put the IP address in here. Put 192.168.1.5.255.255.255.0. Press save. There is another way of setting the IP address on Windows. So if you're using Windows 10, you'll need to go to the control panel. and go to Network and Internet again, and then Network and Sharing Center. And then you want to go across to Change Adapter Settings, and you've got Ethernet here. So you want to right-click on that, press Properties. And then in this section, you'll see Internet Protocol Version 4, TCP IV, IPv4. Double-click on IPv4, and you can see you'll need, it'll be set to Obtain automatically by default, and you want to go Use Following IP Address, and then you can enter in your IP address that you've got that you need to enter to get into the radio. So that's how you do it on Windows. And we're going to jump back to the Mac to configure the power beam. So back on the Mac, you can see that I've got the setup screen for the radio. So we're going to pick our country. We've got United Kingdom and then English and then agree. It's going to ask us to choose a password. So the username by default is UBNT. And then we'll just we'll pick a password. So now we're in the GUI for the power beam. We want to connect this radio to an access point. So before we do anything else, we want to change the IP address to 
match the subnet of the access point we're going to be connecting to. So in this case, the IP address is 172.18.38.6, and then the gateway would be .1. I can remove any DNS because my setup's not on the internet, but if you've got any DNS settings, you'll need to put those in there. I'm going to turn off those two settings. So what we're going to do now is press save, and I'll need to change my IP address on my machine to get back into it. So I press save now. Go back to the IP settings. I'm going to remove that IP address and put 172.18.38.7 in this case. Our access point is on dot five. This CP is on dot six. Apply. Just quickly while we're waiting for that to change on Windows, you'll need to go back to the same same section again, and then delete the old IP address and put the the new one back in as well. So we need to copy the IP address and enter that in. So it takes about 20 seconds for the radio to do an IP change and we'll be able to get back in in a second. If it is taking a longer amount of time, you can just run a ping a ping to the radio and it will, it will ping once it's come back up. So I've logged back in the Powerbeam now. I had my uh, IP address configured incorrectly. That's why it took a little time. So I can now see I'm in the Powerbeam and it's ready to go. So to connect this to an access point, we'll need to go across to wireless. And on the GUI, there's, there's a few modes. So I'm just going to zoom in a second. So we've got basic wireless settings. We've got access point, point to point mode, channel width, and SSID. And like down here, we've got wireless security and the WPA2 password. So if this was an access point, we turn on the access point mode, and we also get some extra frequency settings. But this is a CPE, so these boxes need to be left off. Uh, if this was a point-to-point, -point, we could put this in point-to-point -point mode, and what that does is it opens up some additional channel width settings that are not available for point-to-multipoint setups. But for, th for this example, we're going to be connecting this CPU to an AP that's got other clients on it already. So we can leave this like this. So what we could do is we could put we could enter in the SSID manually uh, if we knew that if we know the SSID off by heart. Um, but in this in this scenario, we're going to press select, and what this will do is it will run a spectrum scan. And it'll, and it'll pick up a load of other SSIDs in the area, and then it will tell you which ones are just Wi-Fi AC, so 82.11 AC. So you can see here I've got an Air Max AC device at the bottom there. Uh, that's another uh, network I've got set up. But the one we're looking for is the Hostify Test AP, uh, and that's on neg on minus 20, which means it's very, very close, and they are very close to each other. And you can see here you can click on a radio button uh, to select that SSID, and you can press either Lock to AP or Select. Lock to AP isn't recommended. Um, what it what it manually does is locks the MAC address of this SSID uh, within the CP device. And the main problem with that is if you have a problem with the access point, and st let's say you've got twenty or thirty CP clients on on that one particular AP, and that AP has, and if that AP malfunctions, you need to replace it. All every single one of those thirty devices is going to have problems. Well, they're not going to connect to the AP because they're locked to that specific MAC address. So in that scenario, you'd have to go around each and every client, and if they're customers from WISP as well, it's going to be a massive headache uh, to change the change the MAC address. So in this scenario, don't press lock to AP. Use select, and that'll just select that SSID. Uh, as long as you've got a good enough good enough WPA2 password, uh, there's no chance of that becoming a problem really. Uh, locking it to an AP. The only scenario you use a lock to AP feature is if you've got a load of different APs. Uh, with the same SSID broadcasting, and you want to lock specific clients to specific APs, but we're not going to use that in this scenario. So jumping back to my guide, I can see I've got a hostify test of the SSID. I'm going to copy the password over and place that in there. Let's go zoom out a second now. So I've got the password there. There are some advanced settings with power, um, but we'll leave those as they are. I'm going because I'm doing this indoors. I'm going to put this right down to minus four dBm, uh, so it's it's absolutely fine there. Uh, and we're going to click Save Changes on that. That's all we needed to do to get it connected to that AP. So go back to the dashboard now. You can see there the CPU is maxing out for a second. And then what it's doing now is it's scanning through the spectrum to find, try and find that AP I've got. So my AP is on 5800, right at the very top of the spectrum here. So it'll give it a second. It will sort of go through and, and find that AP and then lock to it. Yeah, so it's gone back to 5800 now as it's scanned through. And it will connect in a second now. The GUI just take a little 
a little while to catch up with what the radio is actually doing. I can see on the on the can see on the indication lights that the lights are all on on the power beam and it's already connected. So, and there we go. So our link is now connected. Don't be alarmed if you see the throughput levels are quite low to start with. It is sort of a ramp up process um, as it as it figures out how stable the connection is, and you'll see the capacity graph ramp up. So don't be alarmed if you see that low to start with. As if it's low after a few minutes, then it's, there's something obviously wrong with it. Um, this might not show the highest throughput due to how close they are together. Um, it's not really recommended to have the devices this close to each other, but for this scenario, it's absolutely fine. It's getting there. It's ramping up to full full throughput there. So we've got nearly 100 on the receive. So yeah, so on, on this GUI page, you've got the two devices. So on the AMAX screen, whichever device you're logged into is always going to be on the lo on the left hand side. So in this instance, I'm logged into the left the Powerbeam uh, CP device, and then the one you're connecting to is always going to be on the right hand side. So in the scenario of the AP, uh, you'll see. Um, so with the access point, you'll see that that everything gets reversed around. So I'm just going to log into the AP now. Yeah, so once I'm in the AP, you've got the AP on the left-hand side and the, and the stations on the right-hand side. Uh, so I've given it a few minutes, and you can see that the capacity is now ramped up to 145.46. Yeah, so I'm logged back in the station, and you can see on the left-hand side, 120-ish uh, receive, 140-ish download. And that's, a, you can, that's what you can expect on a 20 megahertz channel, about 150 either way. Again, because they are quite close together, it's not going to be the most ideal setup. Uh, you can see here the RF environment. Over time, the radios will gather information about it, their local wireless scenario and show the waterfall graph. So blue is really quiet, uh, noise-wise. If you can see anything red, that's not really a good sign. Signal levels here for both chains. You have zero, ch zero and one for the chains. Modulation levels there, they're pretty much the highest they can be. And you've got a graph of history of throughput and capacity, as well as the signal level and noise levels as well. Coming down to the bottom, you can see the specific stats for this this radio. So you've got the model, the network mode, the version of firmware it's on, the station, the wireless mode, and you can see that the LAN uh, status as well. So my end that I'm plugged the laptop into, it's at a gig negotiation level. But the access point isn't plugged into anything. Uh, it's just got a dash. Uh, so that's fine there. The other thing we were going to look at is putting the radio into router mode as well. So for your network mode, you've got bridge and you've got router. So bridge mode, everything gets passed through layer two. So imagine this as, just think of this radio as a, a wireless cable, essentially. So if you've got two two network ports on a switch, um, two different switches, you're just using a wireless radio to plug them in rather than a cable. And this in this mode, it will pass all the VLANs, all the traffic with no problem. Uh, and that's fine for doing, doing a lot of other things, but if you've got different needs, uh, you can put the radio into router mode, and this will act like a like a router essentially. So you can put triple PoE on the on the WAN interface, set NAT levels and different things. But that's, we'll dive into the router mode on a different video. This was just a a look at how to connect the uh, ac the CP up to the access point. Okay, if we go back to our diagram, we can see here we've got the access point, the nano station that we've connected this station to. We've logged into the station. We've set the IP address. We've set the SSID and WPA2 password. Both devices are now connected and they can start passing traffic. Thank you for watching this video. My name's Alex. If you need any more information about Hostify, have a look at hostify.com. Contact the team at support at hostify.com. And you can follow us on Twitter as well at at hostify underscore net. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next time.